Hello, Mark here. Today I'm going to be showing you what is called curfing. Now basically what curfing is, is an ability and through a method to allow MDF wood to curve. So basically, you know, a lot of times you'll want to use this in a subwoofer port application. Uh, it allows for smoother airflow and it just looks a lot cleaner. So here you can see curves and basically I'm going to show you how to do this. Now some tools that you're going to need are a T-square, kind of have my homemade version here. Some various clamps. Um, whenever you're cutting MDF, I definitely recommend a dust mask as well. This stuff is really nasty for your lungs. Safety glasses, of course. A square and a tape measure. So let's get to it. Now I forgot to mention in the first part there that you're going to also need a circular saw, uh, obviously. Uh, I definitely recommend, well, you have to, you get one that has the ability to set the depth of cut, which is basically all circular saws nowadays. So I have a Ryobi model from Home Depot. It has a laser line, which is kind of nice, but uh, in a work light, but generally any circular saw will do. Now, what you're going to need to do is figure out a little bit of math. Alright, now what you're going to need to do for your math is figure out first what you want your diameter of the arc to be. So not the radius, but actually the full diameter. So for the one that I'm going to be showing on this video, I want a diameter of 12.5. So what I'm going to do is find the circumference of a circle, which is 12.5 times pi. So if you do 12.5 times pi, in this case, I get some arbitrary number, and I'm going to divide that by 4, since I'm only doing a 90 degree bend or a fourth of the circumference. So in this case, I get 9.81. So what I'm going to want to do is take my workpiece. This is going to be um, the actual back and then curved outside part of the fiber or of the sub box. So what I've done is measured a certain distance from this end to this end where I want to start my arc. So that's what that red line is there. So now, from that point, I need to measure out that quarter of the circumference of the circle. So the 9.81 in my case. So what I'm going to do, actually use this. 9.81 is about 9 and 7 eighths, because uh, 7 eighths is 0.875. So I'm going to do a little bit less than 9 and 7 eighths, just right there. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is scribe another line using my square, as this is actually the end of my port. Or not of my port, but of the curve. Okay. So now, I've learned with these curves that the best number of cuts to make 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cuts. All right. So now there's a little math trick you can do in order to evenly space these cuts. So in this instance, you can see that this is a much smaller diameter than what I want this one to be. But to do 12 cuts, you can come up with 11 partitions. So if I take this across, you can see that I lined up the zero mark hope you can see that. Yep. And then the 11 mark, because I want 11 marks. So what I'll do is scribe a line at an angle, like so. And then every inch, I'm going to make a mark. It's funny how math can actually be helpful. This is almost a sort of a math trick a lot of woodworkers use. So what I've done is made inch intervals along this, but at the same time, along this way, I now have exact intervals. So what I can do is put 
put my square back together. Hopefully. Like so. And I'm going to go across here. And at every point that I made a line, or, or a little scribe mark, I'm going to draw a line. So there's my lines. Now what we're gonna do is get set up to actually make these cuts. Now this has gotta be probably the most important, important part of curving. When you set your blade thickness, you're gonna to wanna to set it so that there's about a 16th of an inch of leftover material when you make your cut. So bear with me as I move the camera here. I'm actually going to rotate it sideways. Here you can see the bottom of that blade, how much material it's leaving there. This is very important. And also make sure that you rotate your blade so that it's actually at the full bottom. Okay? Now what we're going to do is proceed with making our cuts. Alright, now this is what I typically use for my setup. Um, as you can see, I have a clamp here and a clamp here, as well as a clamp over here. Now this piece here running across is my T-square. And the way I've actually made this T-square jig is so that this distance to this distance is the same distance on the table saw, or not the table saw, but the circular saw from the edge of the base to where the saw actually cuts. So what that allows me to do is simply line up this edge with this red line. And I've clamped in location for that. Now please, please always use clamps when doing this because not only does it keep your workspace, or workpiece nice and stable, um, which you know allows you to actually make a straight cut, but it also is a safety issue. So, and speaking of safety, I'm gonna now put on my mask as I'm about to make these cuts. So I won't be talking for a couple minutes, but you'll be able to watch uh, the video of me cutting. So I'm going to vacuum up a little bit and we will go from there. All right, so I've unclamped everything. And now I have to say, it's always gonna be very, very fragile on the curve. So make sure that when you're bending it, don't just force it, really take care. If you start to hear splitting, then definitely 
proceed with uh, either filing out the edges a little bit more or running the blade through for another pass. And also do not try to bend more than 90 degrees. Now obviously you could use this method to do um, like a full 180 degree turn uh, if you wanted like a half of a circle profile. Um, you would just double the cuts and also obviously double the quarter of the circumference or in other words take a half of the circumference. But from there I have my kerf. Now what I will do um, once I'm done with the rest of the box is put the base down for the box and actually um, load this up with wood glue, all these slots, and bend it and then screw it in place. And um, basically that's clamping it in place and allowing it to uh, dry overnight. And then from there, I will actually uh, fiberglass this, so put some fiberglass resin on, um, apply some fiberglass mat, and then uh, once it's done, sand it real nice, especially if it was the inside of a port, which this is. Um, I'll sand it real nice and even probably body color it as well. So that's how to curve. Um, you'll definitely take your, your subwoofer box making to the next level, um, amp racks, things like that. You know, basically anything that could use a curve in the wood definitely just makes it look extremely professional. So, thank you for viewing my video. Uh, I plan on making some more how to's in the upcoming weeks as I complete my subwoofer enclosure. So, stay tuned.